Well, greetings. This is uh, Ken Pyle in an almost real time VOD TV conversation. We're with Aaron Nakaoka. Did I say that right, Aaron? It's yeah, Nakaoka. Nakaoka. Right. I apologize. He's from Hawaii and uh, aloha, I have to say, of course. <laughs> aloha. And uh, we've been linked in together for a couple of years, and I noticed a very innovative post, uh, a very innovative thing you're doing that you posted on LinkedIn, I think, over the weekend. It's about contact tracing and using some of the resources that you have as a telecom company. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this program? I'll try to uh, find some uh, your site and put it on online here while we're talking. Yeah, so the, the program is called COVID Tracking Hawaii. Um, the concept was born because I don't think people want to download an app that tracks them 24 seven. I mean, it's a lot easier, but uh, I don't think they want that. Uh, I've seen some GPS uh, apps that will only upload if you get infected or if you wanna check. And that's the second phase of our app as well. Um, and then the Bluetooth apps are having issues with I mean, there's just horror stories about the Bluetooth apps not being able to find other devices, finding devices too far from them. Uh, but I wanted a simple way. And I sit on the, or I, sh I should say, I used to sit on the steering committee for the state IT board. And one of our concerns was always to deal with every citizen, even if they didn't have technology. So. You know, I understand that this technology and this system requires you to send a text message, but I mean, that's pretty much our basement at this point. As long as you can send a text message, you can log where you went. And I'm also under the impression that most people will do something for their own benefit. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure. that, that's just how it is. So being that you don't remember where you go throughout your day, um, or when you went there, I mean, and we're talking about COVID. So COVID, you're looking at about a two week span that you have to memorize or, or write in your calendar, which people don't do that either. Right. Um, so what the system allows you to do is you as the consumer decide, look, I'm going to be here for 15 minutes. I want to remember this place. So I'll scan in. Uh, once you scan in, if that location is infected, we have a database of who went where, um, and we can tell you, so what we do is we remind you, hey, you went to Safeway on the 15th. Just so happens that on the 13th, someone with COVID was there. You may want to act as if you have COVID. And to be honest, that is just, I mean, that's pretty much the battle that we're fighting here in Hawaii is that education is number one, right? Getting people to act as if they have COVID, but if they don't see it in their day-to-day -day life or if they're not reminded of it, or if they're not reminded of how close it came to them, no one's acting like they have COVID. So, you know, if everyone acted like they had COVID, wore a mask, sanitized, we would be open, right? But that's not the case. And and because that's not the case, businesses are hurting and, you know, that just snowballs. So that, my biggest fear is, and, and we just got the news today, another lockdown. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. So the idea was how do we get businesses to participate and I realized that businesses don't want to announce that they had a COVID um, incident, but mm -hmm. if they're going to tell their customers, Hey, we're actually looking out for you. Maybe customers will come. Right. Um, and on the reverse, because it's a database, once they have it cleaned, we could then blast out to everyone that said, Hey, it's cleaned. We found the infected person. They're not quarantined. So please come back and, and become a patron or come shopping again. Right. Um, there's two sides to that. And and I I wonder if it's gonna take a mandate, like how you were saying Australia and New Zealand have to log every visitor. Yeah, they were, uh, my son was in Australia earlier in the year and they he would actually write in his name and phone number and so forth. And what you've done with this QR code is brilliant because you made it very, very, you've removed the friction, right? And it made it easy for the restaurants or whoever the business is. So, I've been chatting with the, uh, over text, I've been chatting with our Lieutenant Governor, Josh Green, and he was concerned about privacy. And I told him, look, as it is right now, when people go into a restaurant, they're, pe they're signing a piece of paper and the waiter's throwing that in a box in the front. So if I wanted your phone number, 
I just have to steal a piece of paper or I take a picture of it, right? Um, my barber has us sign into a book, right? And A, you could take a picture of the page or B, some people did, I saw some people not sign in, all right? Sure. So, and who knows if that information is correct or, you know, a lot, I mean, computer guys, we don't write anything down. Our handwriting is horrible. Well, my handwriting is horrible. So Mine is too, yeah. When it comes time to notify them, right, you're not going to be able to read the number. Um, but more importantly, I was looking at other applications such as like the bus, where the driver has no way of knowing who got on and off his bus, right? So if the passengers, while they're waiting to get to their stop, can just scan a simple QR code or send a text message, then we know currently the unknown. We don't know who's on that bus, right? Right. Um, and with multiple buses driving the same route, now as a passenger, I'll know exactly what bus driver was sick so I can know that I got, or I was potentially exposed, right? Mm -hmm. um, if we take that the next step further, let's say for example, we, we see your cell phone number was on a bus and was at a restaurant and the restaurant reports. We could actually tell the bus company, hey, this person was at an infected place, was, was or isn't necessarily infected, but was at an infected place and that same day went to your bus, right? So we could scale it down where we make color codes of, look, it wasn't the infected person, but this person went here, 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 and here. It's it's like that um, Korean patient 30 or whatever they call it, that lady that spread it to like 30 different people, right? right? But we could do that based on a database if we get people to participate enough. The nice thing is from a, a if you're the bus uh, line or if you're the local restaurant or the barber or whatever, you're not having, you, as that business owner, you're not having to worry about maintaining that database either or making the calls afterwards, right? Right. So, the, you know, everything's done over text messaging and with the gateways, um, we can literally just blast it out and you're done, you know? And you guys handle all that, I assume. Yeah, so we wrote some PHP and it's just handled on a little uh, one CPU server. And I mean, it's way less than even emails, right? So right. it's amazing what you can do when the text message is only 144 characters and the demand is nothing really on the server. It's brilliantly simple, um, but at the same time, it seems like it, it also is a very good way to keep privacy. I mean, if we trust in you, you know, right. basically, which you are already as a ISP type of business, and maybe you should talk about some of the businesses you run already. I mean, you also, you have to be very careful about people's information more so than like an internet company, right? Yeah. So, you know, we're an ISP. We're also a TISP. So we do tell people's telephone service. We get into, you know, we run their phone systems. We list, we can listen to their voicemails, but we don't. Um, it's just of no interest to us. And there is no, there's no interest in me looking at where, what restaurants people go to. Right. My interest is let's get rid of COVID. So business can go back. Yeah. Like this is one company that I want to kill. Like I want, <laughs> I want this to be so successful that we no longer need this, this service. Right. Um, right. That would be, that's my goal is to stop doing the service. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, one thing where you, you definitely want to work your way out of the business. But it seems like, and it's so brilliantly simple, it, it seems like it, this would be a great franchise opportunity, if you will. But it, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to get you on the call, because, you know, around the country, there's a thousand, you know, little independent operators such as yourself mm -hmm. uh, in, in other parts of the country. And it seems like where this has to really work is almost at the county level and local, local type of situation. I mean, if if every Rotary Club or if every um, Better Business Bureau came to us and said, I want a copy of this, we would throw up a copy for them. They would be able to um, have their own database for their area. And the beauty is, unlike the, like, so for example, the Virginia Bluetooth tracking, right? If we run a Hawaii Bluetooth tracking, and the Hawaii phone and the Virginia phone match and the Virginia phone reports, Hawaii's not going to know because the databases are not linked. Right. With us, because we're not going that in depth with the quote unquote tracking, right? We're notifying. It's more, more notifying than tracking. Um, 
if the businesses that you scanned in on know who they got their QR code from, or you know, they know who their database is, they just tell that one person and that one person blacks it out. That's it, right? Um, so if, yeah, if every Rotary Club were to come to us and say, hey, I need a copy of this and I'm gonna push it out to all the businesses that are my members, then that area would be well blanketed. And then the beauty of it is, you know, none of this is free, right? I mean, I'm sure there's CARES Act money and I'm sure some government body would want to slow us down and get us, <laughs> you know, and, and pay us. But what you could do as a Rotary Club is every time we, every time someone subscribes, we send the confirmation text message. That confirmation text message has the opportunity to put in someone's URL. And what we did was we wrote the code so that it can cycle through. So we wrote the code two ways. One, if you're a quote unquote sponsor and you have a QR code up, or let's just say you have a number up, when your patrons scan your number, it only shows your website. Oh, okay, perfect. But if you're not a participant and you're just like, if you're not a quote unquote sponsor giving money to the project to help pay for all the costs, sure. then everyone that does pay for the cost gets to show their website on like the bus. If the bus doesn't want to pay, so be it. But all the local businesses could have their websites on everyone's phone and that's gold, yeah. right? So, you know, I mean, I, if the business side of me had to monetize it. Somehow, yeah, sure. Exactly. Right. Um, but again, it's not free, right? You, right. you know, we're, we're talking 007 cents per text message. And so it's one coming in one confirmation, and then heaven forbid the, the alert. Right. And we're talking if someone, I mean, depending on where your state is, like Hawaii is locked down. So we may go to one place, but if you're open, like let's, you know, some state that's open, you might go to 10, five, 10 places a day. Right. So we're looking at 10 cents per user. You know, you expand it out a million people. Yeah. It starts you know, to add up. Yeah. Right. It's, it's a hundred thousand dollars a month, but yeah. you know, and, and that's where, Either CARES Act money needs to come in, a large carrier needs to come in, or or we just monetize it through the Rotary Clubs. Yeah, but, the sponsorships, I could see that where there could be an incentive, uh, you know, maybe they give away a soda if you do the QR code or something like that, and, you know, they tap for you. Know, right? Yeah, incentives. I mean, that's the nice way to do it. I was thinking, yeah. if you don't show me the confirmation code, you don't come you in. You don't eat, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is actually a very uh, valid way to do it, right? Yeah, you have to wear a mask to come in, so... Yeah, so you make sure that I have your cell phone number, and if I don't, then you know you can't come in. Yeah. So, and and just to be clear, I was thinking um, maybe, uh, and I won't give a specific name, but say there's a, a, a telephone company in Bemidji, Minnesota, as an example, and they serve five thousand square miles, and you know they have all their customers and businesses there, but they would like to basically just take you know your code and port it to their community and then maybe work with the rotaries and stuff like that. But would you kind of make it available like on an open source or a GitHub type basis so they could replicate it in their community? Sorry, you paused there, but um, oh. yeah, I mean, if, you know, I think we would be open to open sourcing it. Um, maybe just give us a little bit of credit on the advertising. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Give us one sponsorship line. But honestly, we would even just copy it for them. Um, to be honest, it lives on a VPS that doesn't cost me. I mean, you know, the cost of VPS is so right. it lives on a VPS. Um, the hardest part is running PHP to create the, the QR code. Um, so that it's just easy for the, the shops. Right? right. So, you know, one of the things we aim for was scale. Like I had several rules that I need to create and hit and scalability was one of them. I needed to get it in everyone's store on every bus overnight. So we have a website that will create the QR code. And from there, that user or that customer or that um, location can just print the papers, put it up and we're done. So, yeah, yeah. actually, uh, it's a really nice website. It's uh, very simple here. I'll go side by side here, but uh, and looked like you had all the you know, create QR code there. So this was the PHP. This is the front end of the PHP, I guess. Yeah, I mean, to, we're, we're not graphics guys. <laughs> hey, it, hey, it works. <laughs> yeah, we're functional guys. So yeah, you, what you would do is you would put in your 10 digit number of, of let's say the main location. Um, for buses, we could use either their serial number, their, their license plate, I mean, something that's 10 digits that's um, unique to them. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then, so if you, like, let's say you put in your phone number, right? And then you hit submit, it'll download, or you can go ahead and put a, okay. yeah, I'll go do put, that. you can put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. right? Or I don't know. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I'm just your, putting something random here. Right, and you hit submit, it'll download the QR code. So the people watching this right now, if they bring out their, their smartphones, they can scan this QR code. And I'm seeing QR codes all over the place. Like I'm seeing it for military um, recruitment. I'm seeing it at my doctor's office. So I think it's pretty prevalent and enough that people know how to use it. Right. But if they just bring out their cell phone, they, they scan it. All it does is create a text message. It creates a text message to a toll free number and it has that number you entered. So mm -hmm. it'll, it'll then pair that person's cell phone number with the number you entered and the date. From there on our back end server, which is not accessible on the internet, we are able to say, okay, there was an incident on this date. And so what we do is we say anyone from incident date to today or with, you know, I, ideally we don't go past two weeks because after two weeks, right. it doesn't, doesn't matter. Right. Or right. so the science says, right. right. Now, whatever the incident date is to today, we message everyone and say, Hey, on this date, there was a, there was a COVID positive case you visited on this date, here's some information. And then we can direct them to their local department of health testing site. So yeah, you're right. It needs to, it, it can get out there. If, if, you know, if there was a telco out there that wanted to do this, we can work with them. Um, yeah. I mean, if, if this saves somebody, right, if this gets somebody tested and it saves them from giving it to a, a potential death, then it's all well worth it. That's, that's well, the goal. Well, yeah. And I, I, I would think that there's a way to do it such that it wouldn't cost you, uh, cost you more. I, I just put the screen up here again, because I did, I did like, uh, the, I haven't read through all the menus here, but you have, you know, here's the example placard and the, the table card and so forth. Um, yeah. And, and, and not to, not to out them, but they were a bar that had a COVID, a COVID case. So, oh, so had they had this, all of their customers would have been made aware of it quickly. Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's amazing. It's, uh, uh, and I like this section here. I got an alert what you should do. <laughs> when right. You I mean that, you know, Frank DeLima is our, our national treasure here. So, okay. Um, nice. but what, what we would do is at the bottom of that uh -huh. page at, you're looking at, we would have the active alert. So we would have the phone number, what they, so that way there's a, there's a rolling list. Okay. Um, yeah. And you know, we're going to push them to the department of health. So what I'm hoping for is our department of health signed up with this service called health space. And I don't know if other, other counties have signed up for health space, but basically it's a contact tracing CRM basically. Right. Oh, okay. Um, but what we could do is because we're on the user's cell phone, we can push them to the CRM's registration site and they can already have all that information inputted to save some guy. Cause okay. Health space it is good. It, it helps, it helps them text and email with potentially um, infected people. The problem with health space is they have to still manually enter the information into health. Space. Oh my gosh. So all the, that path, they have to recreate that path manually basically is what you're saying. Correct. Right. But now what if I can somehow pre at least pre enter the user's information for the person that's doing health space, right? The contact tracer, if I can speed the contact tracers job up and he can get to someone quicker and potentially get them tested or get them treatment or whatever, and again, if they save a life, this was all worth it. Yeah. So, no, and that seems um, like that is a big hole in the uh, system uh, everywhere. I, I, I think uh, I know there was an issue here in Silicon Valley, I believe. That. Yeah, I mean, the I think, aspect of it. I mean, in in the end, we don't have a national database of people. You know, thank goodness. But yeah. um, I think the government, the you know, the health departments. They think that, oh, I can enter data, but they don't realize how painful data entry, <laughs> right? I mean, that's why all the data entry had moved to international waters, Philippines, Vietnam, all of that, right? So what I'm doing is I'm basically trying to be the outsource or the outreach program for the Department of Health 
and having crowdsourcing to enter our data. So when they finally do run across you, they already know like, hey, okay, I have your data, I have your phone number, I have your email, like the basics, right? right. That alone probably would save three to four minutes per case. And if we do, you know, if I can save minutes, we can, I mean, in the end, right? Saving minutes saves lives. That right. Works. No, that's huge. And it's, um, uh, it's very exciting because uh, it's just it's such a, um, a different approach to this, uh, you know, compared to all the technology that people are <laughs> trying to get to the core of the OS of uh, Android and Apple. And, and yet I still have, I don't have no idea if it's on my phone, right? And I have no right. idea how to use it. Yeah, I mean, without an app, and even the apps are having problems with the databases and syncing, and and then there's the and people have to download them, right? I mean, well, so I, and that's I think that's the number one problem is downloading it, trusting yeah. it that it won't track you twenty four seven. Exactly. And then then you have the Bluetooth problem of different versions of Bluetooth won't sync. So, right. you know, I, I I'm a simple guy. <laughs> I'm not a programmer by trade, so my right hand man Sean wrote wrote the PHP after I gave him my vision, right? I, mm -hmm. I drew it out and, and then I told him, this is what I want. You know, he went a little far away, so we had to pull it back and say, like, I told him, that's too complex, right? I said, I need a database of three pieces of information, the phone number where they were, what time they were there, and their cell phone number, that's it. And, yeah. and he's like, well, let me add a UUID. I'm like, do whatever you want. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we added a UUID, um, that way you can visit multiple places in a day uh, we had, okay. and then, so from then the business side of me was like, okay, let's send the confirmation in that confirmation. We're going to thank a company for paying for that because yep. I'm willing to give out some money, but in, when it scales, unless I'm a partner with a telco, cause I'm not a telco, right? I'm just, a right. TIS, I, I'm just the integrator. Uh, unless someone like an IntelliQuint comes in and says, Hey, we want to back to you and we're going to do this nationally. And any biz, any Better Business Bureau or any Rotary Club that comes to us, we're going to give them a toll free. We're going to give them the texting, and they're going to deploy it. And um, you know, I told I've been already, uh, you know, the, the president of Intelliquin. I've already emailed him. I said, hey, this would be great marketing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you guys have a and, and they have an SMS gateway that they're starting. Okay. So I said, look, you know, you have a you have an SMS gateway. You know, we we have. A potential of getting your name on everyone's cell phone. Let's let's, let's do something. <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh, it. It seems like a no-brainer, but of course, these things are always uh, a challenge, and it is the type of thing that hopefully, like you said, it uh, it it goes out of business soon because it's not needed. Hopefully, but that you know, who knows how long this will last, right? Yeah, and you know, I think maybe long term we just get into the practice. So I think QR fatigue is going to be a thing right scanning everywhere you go but if you care for your health right now with the at, at the immediacy it's at and the danger it's at then let's let's just scan you know the the next level and where i'm trying to find a partner because again i'm not a programmer i have a vision for an app and, mm -hmm. and all all i want is the app to you hit it it opens your camera automatically it scans and it logs it to your phone so no data ever leaves your phone then when you run the app, I want it to come and check our server for a JSON file and it'll tell you where, well, where there was an infection and then it'll alert you on your local phone. We never get okay. any information from you, right? Um, the reason why I'm doing that is one, twofold. One, privacy, right? All the guys are saying, I don't want to give you my cell phone number. Whatever, that's fine, don't, right? It's not like I'm gonna do anything with it and it's just your cell phone number, not your name, not your address, anything else. Um, and two, I don't, I don't want to keep paying for SMSs. <laughs> right, right, right. So if we were able, if we were able to get an app out there, then the app would just create a database on the person's phone, and then the app would then go and check for infections when they open the app. Right. So it, it's twofold. But again, I don't believe a lot of people will download an app. Yeah. Right. That's that's number one. And then two. Um, it doesn't work on dumb phones. I, I, I don't even know a better way to say dumb phones, but right. you know, or non smart non app phones. Yeah. Non app phones. Right. So, you yeah. know, flip phones have a, and you can't even say flip phones nowadays. Cause, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So a, a non app phone has a problem of participating with all of these fancy dancy, you know, apps. 
So this system being very simple, if they're okay with their privacy, I mean, they have a flip phone, they're not gonna get tracked. Right. So, so if they're willing to text the toll free number, it's a lot of numbers because they're gonna have to text 10 digits for the toll free and 10 digits for where they're going. But after 20 digits, they have a reminder. And so, and, and the guy that has a flip phone, I'm pretty sure is not running a calendar <laughs> unless right. he's running a paper calendar and he's writing down where he went. But right. then he can be, obviously he's not, he's not looking at Twitter every day. So he's not gonna be informed on where there was incidents, right? So, you know, I, yeah, it's, it's a simple but yet yeah, effective and it, and it covers a large base. That, that was my goal. Yeah, and it seems like the um, uh, it's something that counties should be interested in as well. I mean, if they're mandating masks, you know, to enter a building, it seems like entering a text or QR code would be uh, a, a similar. So, I mean, there's a couple restaurants here in Waikiki that are tracking names, and that's like it's funny because I had gotten the idea, written it down, then met met a friend for dinner, and they had made me sign the name in. So I was I pitched it right there. I was like, hey, yeah. what happens if I can get rid of this piece of paper for you, right? But if I can confirm that the person has a real phone number, you know, and I, you know, I, there's going to be, it's not perfect, right? There's going to be challenges of privacy and all this, but it's doing something that currently is not being done. I mean, I, I don't know how hard it is for the federal government to go to Google and say, stop doing all your other work and make me a tracking app. <laughs> like, right. You know, or Apple, make me a tracking app before you guys do anything else. Like, I, I don't, I don't know why that hasn't happened. Well, yeah, I know they were working on it, you know, a few months ago. Right. And uh, both Apple and Google were, um, but. but I, so, I, right. So you have the smartest people in the world that can't roll it out after five months. There's a right. problem. Right. Right. So, you know, if it takes some simpleton like me to say like, hey, let's just make a text database. Yeah, there, there's some there's some legwork involved, but it works and it, it's literally working now. So, I mean, that's that's the goal number one. Well, that's that's terrific. It's it's just wonderful to see. Um what you've done and it's just it speaks to the i'm just looking at your website as you know just it's it's very simple and it's very <laughs> direct no but it's good simple right it's direct but hey, if someone if someone is willing to redo that video on the front i'm all game <laughs> <laughs> no the video is effective too but it, so it's it's a testament though i think to um uh what entrepreneurs can do and uh aaron it's great to finally meet you in person yeah. um and i'll i'm gonna sign off now